Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 65. Most of our time today will be spent on getting the chemical district ready for prime time. I decided that we will start with that one out of the three possible places, since that is a prerequisite for the aluminium industry, and we are still doing just fine when it comes to steel, so Alexandrograd can also wait a little more. I am also happy to say that the happiness issue is seemingly on the mend, and we will see noticeable improvements all across the country without the need of me intervening. That won't last forever though. Near the end of the episode, the population in Mutograd will reach such high levels that the current services will have a real hard time coping, so we will need to quickly add a couple extra buildings to fix the situation. We will also continue building all those pipes we placed down two episodes ago, preferably without causing another traffic jam in Mikhailovia. And we will be literally inches away from finishing the entire railroad ring around the capital. Let's start by adding that fuel delivery to the new road maintenance depot in Electrograd. Speaking of electro, we still need to add a couple pylons to reconnect everything on the power export line. As you can see, happiness is steadily improving, so at this point, I saw no reason to interfere. This cross-country railroad is slowly getting closer to being finished. Unfortunately for us, to completely finish building the ring around Mutograd, we will need the one that is farther away from finishing to be done. And as you can see, it just started to place the catenaries. It will take a while, thanks to the distances involved. Let's get these pumps built. They are just as necessary as any of the pipes, so no reason to keep them waiting. We are still a bit low on steel, but it's improving. Doing all that electrifying on the railroad tend to do that. So, let's set up the system, that will make sure that workers arriving at the city center from the outer neighborhoods can go to the train station for work. I basically made sure to add every possible workplace that is in walking distance from the bus stop, and then I added the train station at the end. I also lowered its percentage to zero. That way, local services will enjoy priority access to workers, and people will only look for work outside the city if everything else is properly staffed. We already have a pretty big number of workers in the train station. We really need to start finishing things up at the new chemical plants, so we can start moving workers there. And one side of the transfer public tracks is done. Sadly, we need the other side to complete the ring. To get ready for the eventual commuter service from Mutograd to the chemical plants, I decided to buy one of the trains for it. Because why not? I also set up the actual line too, but since the tracks aren't done, it's not usable just yet.
I wanted to make sure everything gets done on the ring before we move on to other projects, so the chemical branch can wait a little bit more. Once we connect the ring up to the rest of the network's power, we will be better able to see where we have more work waiting to be finished. Getting rid of the yellow power symbols will make things more clear. As you can see, one stretch of tracks is only reachable from the cross-country track that is still being electrified. That's the reason for the holdup. Now, let's turn our attention to these conveyor belts. We should be able to tell if they are buildable or not. And unfortunately, it seems they are not. I will give them an extra chance, but I can already tell you, this place requires a bit of rearrangement. Nothing major, but the current setup is not possible. In the meantime, let's not forget about the power. Two substations should be enough to cover everything. Finally they tell me if they are stuck. They didn't do that in the last episode. Good thing we added those extra switches on the export power line. One of them will be very useful for powering this neighborhood. It cuts into that field a bit, but I can live with that. Also, it seems we managed to hook the ring up to the rail network power. Only the construction signs are visible now. Much easier to tell where we have work to be done. This is pretty hopeless. Replacing one of them managed to fix it somehow, but sadly, that will not be the case for the rest.
This is where I gave up, and decided to start over. First, I will place the belts and the towers, and deal with the roads last. Anyways, this is the part of the video where I had a bit of silence, so let me use it to tell you about the state of the water systems. I spent a couple hours trying to hammer it into shape, and it is quite a torturous process of trial and error. I need to adjust things, save, enable the system, let it run for a bit, reload, fix things, re-enable the system, etc. It's quite the undertaking. All while taking notes to make sure I don't miss anything when I finally get around to doing the final setup. Since I need to keep the series going, I need to make sure I can do it all at once before an episode, which I really hope to be the Monday one. Yeah, it's way more complicated than I anticipated. But, I think I'm getting close to getting rid of the most glaring issues. Also, I decided to concentrate on the most immediate issues first, which means taking care of citizens, and the industries that cannot operate without water. After that is done, and the system is running smoothly, I will move on to maybe adding drinking water to the general industries too. As far as I can tell, they will still operate without it, but I haven't checked what impact the lack of fresh water has in them. Maybe the productivity goes down, I'm not there yet. As I've said, I'm still fighting it around the cities. In fact, the general water is more or less okay, but the sewage needs some more work. Forcing the treatment plant to deal with both cities is a bit much, but appears to be doable. Almost there. Finally. All the conveyor belts and towers are reachable by helicopters. I'll deal with the roads in a second. Going to the right is not possible. We will need to go the other way. It's a bit of a detour, but they aren't really necessary, so I'm not that bothered about it. Alright, we have the belts, the towers, and the roads. I think it even looks a bit better, not as cramped and messy as it was before. I remove the CO assignments, to see if they reassign themselves automatically. Just to make sure the roads don't interfere with the helicopters. Everything seems to be in order. That problem is solved. Now, let's sort out the power already. That was straightforward enough. Ah. 
At this point, we can unleash the new track layers on the chemical branch. The rest of the ring is now in the hands of the original duo. and the conveyors are done. Hey, the longest ever section on the railroad is finished. Let's tell the old office to start building that section, and get it done at last. We even have power at the chemical plants. The only thing remaining is the railroad. Otherwise, this place is ready. In the meantime, we might as well upgrade these roads to gravel at least. I wanted to give this substation the usual dirt driveway, but I simply couldn't make it look okay, so I just went ahead with the original gravel. To make it blend in a bit better, I also gave it a gravel foundation, so the road isn't cut off so awkwardly. That was an awfully short build time. I will discover the reason for it in a couple minutes. Now, how did Sunflower end up here? It shouldn't be able to come in from the Transrepublic Railroad kind of weird. If it built this section, it should have just turned around and left the way it came. Oh well, the mysteries of the pathfinding system. Huh, these roads got built real fast. I'm still getting surprised how fast certain things get done. Let's see how our new vehicles are coming along. 
All the trucks and tractors are finished, and even most of the harvesters. We can also set up the local DO, so it will start moving the fresh harvest into the silos as soon as they are ready. Well, after I make sure that all the fields are reachable. The farm managed to find all the fields by itself. All that's left is the fuel deliveries. It's too late for these guys, so they will go for a refill in Bobinski, but once the tankers arrive, they won't have to. I only had Bob Inski assigned to this construction, and both the building and the driveways needs workers to finish, so we need the help of a Dumsky. Looking at these houses, everything is going perfectly. Apart from the unemployment, and the usual double complaints we elected to ignore, we can only see a couple small errors. But that will change near the end, thanks to the massive influx of citizens. Let's redo this gravel foundation, so it merges with the road a bit better. In the last episode, I stopped dropping off plastics at the pickup station in Electrograd. I forgot that Autozov also needs it. Let's fix that real quick. The DOs are still set up correctly. We only need to add space allocation in the warehouse, and things will be back to normal soon enough. For some reason, railroad construction is progressing painfully slowly. I wonder why. We cannot assign worker pickups to this CO until the driveway is finished. Hey, look! The farm machinery just arrived. And since we already have fuel delivered to the building, they don't need to leave for a refill immediately, like the trucks did. Even the plastic got to Autozog pretty quickly, and vehicle production is in full swing once more. Speaking of, I believe I wanted to replace those weak excavators a while back. It seems we have six of them around the Republic. Glad that we don't need to build too many new ones. And we only have two offices that has them one in Adumski, and one in the original border outpost.
The thing is, that the current open hull trucks cannot move those heavier excavators. Thankfully, we have the necessary trucks in the office next door, so with a bit of juggling, we can take care of that issue. Since both offices are completely full, I sent one of the smaller trucks to the AutoZob depot, and with one spot open, it was a simple job of sending one truck between the two offices at a time. In the end, I could have accomplished it a bit easier, since I want to replace those excavators. Selling them would have been enough to free up space for this juggling act. Oh well, live and learn. Anyways. With those higher capacity open hull trucks in the correct office, we will be able to replace those diggers with the heavy duty western model. In fact, I think those heavy bulldozers have also been sitting idle, since the old truck were too weak to move those around too. Two birds with one stone. So, we need six new excavators to replace the weak ones. Thankfully, the emergency CO already has the necessary trucks in the parking lot, so we don't need to order more. We do however need to move a couple machines around in the list of vehicles, so I am less bothered by the messy organization. We have the last two harvesters ready, and also a couple of the trucks for the woodcutters. Since we have such big unemployment in Mutigrad, I decided to just open the TV station fully. That will give us a pretty big boost to the loyalty of our citizens. Plus it will keep people busy in the capital. And I finally discover the reason for the lackluster performance in track building. There is little to no gravel in the rail CO. The reason for it is the fact that we have only one dumper delivering it from Bobinski. I leave it as is for now, but I will end up replacing one of the open hull trucks with another dumper fairly soon. Here, I decided to just assign these microbuses to the water treatment commuter lines. They won't be released anytime soon, but we might as well do it. This is where I decided to order that extra dumper. Hopefully, that will speed things up a little. It seems these woodcutters have a much bigger forest to work with, than the one in Electrograd. We might as well open the university too. We have quite a few students waiting for professors. Well, not anymore. This is where the first signs of troubles appeared. It seems citizens have a hard time getting around the capital, and the more remote apartment blocks are now complaining about culture, sport, and other things. It's as good a time as any to build the first of these new cinemas.
they are also having a hard time reaching the hospital. And when I look at the original one, all the ambulances are out of the parking lot. At first I wanted to build a small clinic, but I think a proper hospital is more advisable. Let's get the ambulances right now. And with that dumper done, we can replace one of the open hull trucks with it in the rail CO supply office. That last piece of track on the ring is coming along slowly. Forcing the track layers all the way out here isn't exactly good when it comes to speedy construction. The biggest culprit is of course the fact that when I started electrifying the place, I also included these segments in it. So they need to go back and forth between sections. Maybe adding an art gallery in this spot will help with the culture issues a bit more. Loyalty shows a pretty big jump since we opened the TV station. Very happy to see it. Now that the new hospital is done, I better move the ambulances to the front of the queue. We need them pretty badly. Also, the construction bus depot is ready to go, so we can add the train station as the pickup point for it, and add it to the Bobinski group. The fire station and the road cleaning depot is a bit misaligned. Oh well, not going to do it again. Adding a bit of pavement will make it less obvious. Well. Even if one side is going slowly, this side is doing great. I'll add a bit of pavement here too, so the cutoff is less awkward. Might as well add a bit of gravel around the transformer, because why not?
The art gallery is ready. It just needs its driveway finished, and it's ready to receive patrons. Really glad to see the town warehouse still being full. It will come in handy real soon, when the real problem starts to appear. And there it is. It seems people like to take care of shopping locally, so practically nobody uses the big shopping center right now. Everyone is going to that small one in the middle. Look at that queue. We better build one as fast as possible to shore up the shopping capacity in the area, before people get really pissed with me. That might explain why people also complain about sport and culture, despite the abundance of facilities. If they spend all their free time on the bread line, they don't have time for their other needs. Good. The ambulances are done, and also a couple more buses. Just as a consolation prize, I also added a museum to the area. Once their shopping needs are taken care of, they will appreciate it, I'm sure. Thankfully, heating is still going strong. These tower cranes will speed things up considerably. And it's done. We can add the regular deliveries now. Unfortunately, I forgot to order the refrigerated truck, so meat will have to wait a little bit.
There, that one is sorted too. It will take a little bit for it to reach the city, but with the other goods already present in the shop, things should start improving overall. Once the backlog of shopping is dealt with, things should go back to normal. I should have built the big shopping center instead of the small one, but it was an emergency, and we needed a shop quickly. I might see if I can replace it with a big one in the next episode. Anyways, the big rush is over, and the queues are gone. Hopefully they can find the time to deal with their other needs from this point on. There is also a lack of electricity in this narrow area. The kindergarten is fine, so we managed to find the only bad spot. Oh well, things seem to be working okay anyways, but I will deal with it anyways. Maybe the meat freezers need it or something. Hopefully, people can start getting happier from now on. This was a bit of a skip fire situation. Before we close things down, let's check on the progress of the chemical branch. Anyways, we are tantalizingly close to starting up the chemical district. The only thing in our path is the rails, which is already half finished. And even the ring is only waiting for the last segment to be electrified. After that, we can set up the signals at long last, and start using trains to deliver the goods to the town warehouse in Mutigrad. That will allow us to remove quite a bit of traffic from Mikhailovia. After that, we can start expanding the city. That will mostly involve adding extra services around the outer edges of the capital, and when I'm satisfied with those, we can start adding more apartment blocks. And let's not forget about the airport. It's been sitting idle, ready to be built for quite a while, so it's about time we got to it. I think I will dedicate the immediate area around the bridge leading to it to the tourist industry, with a couple hotels, and a few attractions to keep the foreigners busy. I will also keep working on the water before the next episode, and I can only hope I'll manage to do it at last. It's been quite the learning experience to say the least. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. If you did, you can support me on Ko-fi, for which you can find a link in the description. If you are not the donating type, that is fine too, you can still support me by leaving a like, or subscribing to the channel, which just might motivate me to make more. Until then, see you later.